the central themes of Kung Fu is about creating your own path. And you've had this really interesting journey from electrical engineering now into the arts. How did you discover your passion for acting, music, fashion? What was that moment that you realized you wanted to pursue a career in this industry? Yeah, great question. Um, I've always been a very curious person. Uh, so I've always, if there's something I'm interested in, I'm going to give it a go. So music, for instance, was something really early on uh, in the 90s. I was really into like uh, the grunge period, like Nirvana, Soundgarden. And then I got into like Silverchair, Bush, Smashing Pumpkins and that kind of thing. And my instinct was I just wanted to pick up a guitar. And so I remember I just told my dad, hey, can I like he had this guitar from when he was in the military like a long time ago. It was like broken at the head and he like super glued it as an Asian parent would instead of buying a new one. And uh, and I, yeah, I just got really obsessed with playing guitar, started taking lessons, started forming bands, playing talent shows, writing music. And so I just really took a deep dive into music. Um, and that was an active decision um, to do that, whereas I then w- uh, moved into modeling. Uh, maybe about, I don't know, seven years later or something. And modeling was actually a passive decision. So I was scouted in the East Village in New York City. And then uh, it was just good timing. I was transitioning away from music. Um, And so, yeah, so acting is interesting because music was an active decision. I was really going hard at it, Um, you know, financially not very viable, um, as any musician would know uh loved I, my soul was my soul was absolutely full i absolutely loved waking up every morning i had a mission to write music to mix to produce and to perform with my band whereas modeling was more um was financially viable but uh you know after many many years of that you know i still enjoy it but i wanted something more you know something that where i can channel creatively what i you know uh just channel my in, inner creativity and so Acting was kind of a no-brainer, you know, it was acting something, you know, if you look at my yearbook from, I want to say like the first grade, uh, in the very back, uh, everyone, you know, writes like what they want to be when they grow up. And mine was actually to be an actor, you know, I was really obsessed with like Tom Cruise movies when I was a kid. And, um, you know, so, so, I mean, that was when I was a kid and, you know, throughout uh, elementary school, middle school, I would, you know, I, I remember I always per- loved performing in skits for like school projects and stuff. And um, so, yeah, so, you know, came full circle, started doing TV commercials for modeling and then started moving more in acting, started training and um, decided to do the deep dive and uh, the rest is history. Dennis share a lot in common. Was that one of the reasons why you were attracted to this project? And is it more or less challenging for you as an actor playing a character who you do share a lot of some similarities with? Yeah, you know, I had no choice in, uh, in well, I, I guess I had a choice in accepting the role, but, uh, but it was very awesome and s- sort of serendipitous that Dennis shares similar qualities to me, right? So I, like you said, I studied electrical engineering in college. I, was, I grew up in Silicon Valley, so I was always obsessed with technology. I mean, that's not past tense. I still am to this day, very obsessed with, you know, Apple growing up, Tesla, all these things. So um, to be able to play a character on TV that um, has similar traits and characteristics has been uh, very rewarding. Having said that, as an actor, um, it's always super uh, fun to have the challenge of playing someone um, that has characteristics of who you, uh, that, that embody char- characteristics that you as an individual have, but um, to deviate from that and, and play a completely um, someone you know, that you would uh, never be able to uh, channel, you know, in real life. So um, long story short, it's been such a pleasure playing Dennis. And in season two, as you will see uh, in tonight's episode four, as well as throughout the rest of season two, you will see that, you know, he, um, Dennis will have some struggles. And, um, and uh, that's been really awesome to portray. <laughs> Yeah, like you're just saying, you know, tonight's a big episode for Dennis, and he finds himself in a sticky situation, which provides a lot of really comedic moments. Has comedy always come easy for you? You know, I grew up watching uh, shows like SNL, uh, Mad TV. I was really into Jim Carrey growing up, you know, Ace Ventura, The Mask, all these movies. And uh, so comedy has always been a part of my uh, person. And if you ask some of the other cast members, I, I'm 
I, I, I love joking around. I love inside jokes. I love just like, you know, having a good time. I try to not take myself too seriously. Uh, the people that I try to model my life um, over are, are, are all uh, people who have done very well successfully, but also don't take themselves too seriously. Um, I try to live like by this motto, cool, silly. So you could be cool, but you can't actually be fully cool if you don't have a silly side to you and vice versa. So for me, comedy has always just been a part of me. And, um, and it's been cool to uh, be able to channel a co comedic side of Dennis, which was not seen too much in season one and uh, season two, especially in tonight's episode. By the way, and by the way, credit to Richard, uh, Richard Lowe for writing uh, all this comedic, um, all these comedic bits in this episode for it. All credit goes to him. Yeah, super excited for tonight's episode. We're going to get to see Dennis and Althea get into the action in tonight's episode. How did the preparation for it differ from previous ones that you've done? Um, well, Dennis so far has been um, this perfect guy, you know. So he's uh, a mathlete, uh, comes from a wealthy family, uh, protects and loves his dear fiance turned wife, Althea. So uh, this episode takes a sharp turn from that because you will see that Dennis, like everyone in this world, is not a perfect person. He has his own, um, you know, personal issues and he runs into a predicament in episode four um, and has to seek the help of everyone from Nikki to Evan to Henry to Ryan um, to help him uh, resolve this predicament. So uh, it's been very different in that sense. And I absolutely loved shooting this episode for that reason. Richard Spate Jr. was um, at the helm as the director and, and, and he's in the episode too. Um, and it's, it was just such a pleasure shooting it with the two Richards. Um, and uh, yeah, so it was, I can't wait for everyone to see it. Great chemistry that comes off the screen between you and Shannon. Was that instant? How did you two build that bond? Yeah, Shannon and I, I feel like we're unique in that we, she comes from a dance background. Um, so she, you know, was a cheerleader for the Rams, the Clippers. Um, you know, I, I did modeling for a good nine or 10 years before uh, this show. So, um, you know, we share that similar background. Um, and also just, you know, uh, this show started shooting, um, the, we shot the pilot in March of 2020. So as everyone in the world knows, that's when COVID started, uh, you know, COVID 1.0, I suppose, uh, began. And so, you know, uh, when we came back to shoot season one in August, September of 2020, you know, we were in a bubble, right? So, so our, like our cast has become just so close during that time. And the, and the beautiful thing is, you know, uh, I, I've heard now through um, working on the show that, you know, not every cast and crew is built like ours in the sense that, you know, our cast legitimately gets along, you know, like we don't have any, you know, internal drama or anything like that. And if we do, we resolve it, but, but we're, we all get along so well and we love each other. And, um, and that definitely has helped to solidify Shannon and my bond in terms of being able to channel Alfie and Dennis to our best ability on the screen such a unique episode for for the franchise is there a particular scene that you're really excited for fans to see tonight so many so many but i will say there is an easter egg in this episode and the easter egg is olivia who plays nikki she breaks in one of the scenes and when i say break what i mean is um it's like actors speak for when you accidentally start laughing right during the middle of a take because something's the, the funny thing is uh olivia john Presida, and myself when we're in a scene together any any combination of these three people um it it's a circus it's hard to get work done and in the in the best way possible uh, we, we we just we can't stop breaking we laugh and we laugh and we tell inside jokes in between takes. I've literally learned now that I cannot go to John Presida in between takes. I can't even look at him in between takes. I need to just stay in the zone and, and, and finish the scene before I can like, because I have all these things that come up in between takes that I want to like say to him. And then I look him in the eyes while we're shooting. And then, and then one of us breaks, right? So long story short, in this episode, 
there is an Easter egg and that is Olivia breaking. And I encourage you all to watch the episode and try to find that moment. Um, and and it's, it's so funny that they use that take, right? Like, like, yeah, it's funny. Cause in the moment I was like, oh man, I feel kind of bad. Cause like, you know, I had said a joke to her um, because it was her coverage. So the camera's on her and I said a joke uh, and it solicited laughter. And obviously I'm not, you know, I don't want to, you know, we're trying to film a TV show here, you know, time is of the essence. Right. So like, you know, I just felt bad that, you know, we had to then do another take cause then she cracked. Right. So, but they ended up using it. So it was kind of like ingenious. Um, so I'm looking forward to fans seeing that obviously the finale, well, I guess it's not obvious cause it hasn't aired yet, but the finale of this episode, the final five, five or 10 minutes, uh, involving the car will be a treat for the eyes and all of your senses. Mm, such a good tease. I'm definitely going to look out for that Olivia moment tonight. Uh, this is the, the longest that you've lived with a character. Has anything surprised you about the experience? What's been the biggest takeaway for you thus far? Great question. So I recently learned that, do you know how many parts are in like a, let's say a Toyota, Toyota Corolla. Do you know how many parts are in a car? I think I saw your tweet. It's like 30,000, right? Yes, 30,000. That's crazy. I did not know there were 30,000 parts in a car. And I say that in reference to this question because um, it truly takes a village to shoot a TV show. And I've witnessed that firsthand. You know, I, I kind of knew going into it, but just, oh my gosh, from the executive producers, showrunners, to the writer's room, to, you know, makeup, to uh, the stylist, to wardrobe, to camera operators, to the, you know, the mic operator, everything, right? There, there's just, it's, it's such a big crew and to sustain, um, you know, excellence uh, throughout the course of an entire season, which can last anywhere from six to eight months um, is just truly an honor to be a part of. Um, and, and also it's just, and I was talking with Josh Nepper, who's one of our camera operators, super talented, and he was telling us about how before he comes to set um, for every scene that he shoots, that he actually maps out, he reads the scene, he goes through it with his guys, and he maps out exactly how they're going to shoot this shot and the reasoning behind, you know, every, every decision they're making. Because every episode, uh, we have a different director, right? So, so you have someone coming in and you have to explain to them, this is how we're going to shoot this scene. And, um, and he was telling me that, you know, they, he tries to bring his A game every day in that respect and his team as well, right, to shoot our show. And that, you know, that's not always the case, you know, and, and, and this probably applies to so many contexts, not just film, but like people show up to do their job, right? I'm here, um, I'm going to do X, Y, Z, and I'm going to go home, I'm going to, you know, enjoy my life, right? But this, they're so passionate about not only their craft, but also this show that, they will put, they will bring their A game every day. And that has been, I mean, I have goosebumps talking about it. It's just, that has been such a uh, pleasant uh, thing to witness um, that I didn't think, I, I guess I just didn't fathom prior to actually being on the set of a show for two seasons now. So um, shout out to our entire crew and our entire cast, everyone who works on the show. Um, it wouldn't be what it is without all of them. Do such a fantastic job on it. Uh, you already touched, touched upon this a little bit earlier in the interview, but we know you can't say too much, but what's ahead for Dennis for the remainder of the season? Well, I will say this is not today. You know, we referenced that Dennis is going to have some struggles in today's episode, which you could see in the promo or the trailer. But uh, I will say that this is not the end of his struggles. Uh, he's got some more stuff coming for him throughout season two. And um, you're going to get to see how he navigates it, how he and Althea uh, navigate it. And um, it's going to be it's going to be fun to watch. There's going to be some some punches thrown. Mm. And Kung Fu's already been picked up for a third season. Congratulations, by Thank the you. way. Where would you like to see Dennis's storyline head in the future? And is there another character that you would love to see him interact more with? Kerwin. <laughs> so hear me out, hear me out. My friend was just was telling me about this and, uh, and I thought it was an interesting take. So you have two wealthy families, right? You yeah. have the Soong family, you have the, the Tan uh, empire, if you will. Um, and, uh, you know, they must know of each other. 
right? Especially with how uh, the tans are intertwined with the shens, right? And so I think it would be really awesome if, uh, if Kerwin and Dennis somehow, I don't know, uh, amassed some, some sort of empire of their own. Maybe it's um, something cryptocurrency related or, 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 or anything. And, um, and to see them interact uh, would be so interesting because it's something that you haven't seen yet and you can't quite uh, fathom. So I yeah. think that would be really interesting to see, uh, to see the Suns and the Tans uh, have some sort of, you know, some sort of uh, situation. Mm -hmm.